river is kind of the lifeblood of our community. And I would say it's a big part of who I am. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Can you tell me that fishing story? <laughs> you need help there, buddy, or you got it? Uh, I got it. All right, you ready to go? Yep. OK. You know, when I'm walking down to the river with Mitchell, I'm just thinking about this moment. What kind of fish do you think we're going to catch today? Well, on the river, it's rainbow. There you go. We're not just going fishing. We're experiencing all these things that are part of going fishing. The sounds of moving water and the smell of dew in the morning when you're walking down the trail. You can taste the temperature change as you get closer to water. Do you smell how fresh it is out there this morning? Yep. There's a lot of people that live because of salmon, whether it's our occupation or our pastime. You know, they're such an integral part of who we are in the North State. You know, this, this run of fish used to be the best on this river, one of the best in the world. There was 400 of them left a few years ago. The impacts that those fish bring on all the other fish in the river and the wildlife and the birds, they're in our blood and we can't afford to lose them. If we lost those fish, it'd be, it'd be a tragedy. It's avoidable. It just takes people caring and working to make a difference. One of the things that's lacking in the river is habitat for salmon. Having loose, fresh gravel is very important. When the construction of Shasta Dam was put in in the 40s. It basically blocked all gravel coming downstream. So what we're doing here is putting in the uh, gravel pad to help salmon spawn. A site like this one is key to the survival of winter run as well as the other runs in this area. We have very specific criteria in the fisheries world about how to place and, and build uh, spawning beds. They're dumping gravel in and then spreading it out. Uh, the gravel is sized so that the fish can move it to build their egg nests in it. They want it to be about 18 inches deep. They want it to be a certain velocity or less so that it doesn't sweep things away. Each spawning pair requires about 12 square meters. The more area that we have, the more spawning pairs can produce here, and the more spawning pairs we get, the more babies we get. Well, the importance of what we're doing is to provide a better environment for salmon to be able to spawn safely, and ultimately our goal is to get them out in the ocean and return. It comes down to values. What do we value? We're working very hard, putting valuable resources into increasing the numbers of fish here so that my kid and my kid's kid can come out here 50 years from now and there will be fish here. Projects like this give us hope. You have these outdoors-oriented, family-oriented farmers that are doing all these awesome things to help fish. And that's amazing. Nice, Mitchell. Good. There we go. Woo! Jumping fish. Okay, remember, tip up, tip up, tip up. Good, 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 good. Yeah! Woo, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that a nice fish? Yeah, can I feel it? Yeah. We'll always have those sorts of connections because of fishing and because of the river and because of the fish. All right, buddy, nice work. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Victor Splash! <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, that's you know, what makes these sorts of projects so special. It brings it down to the next generation. So he'll be able to do that with his kids. I'll be able to do it with my grandkids, you know, for hopefully many, many, many years to come. <laughs>